I'm going to talk about conditions for major transitions in biological and cultural evolution. This is an overview of the talk. I'm going to introduce the problem, my method for uh, approaching the problem, and uh, a hypothetical solution to the problem. So the problem is we make these simulations of evolution and we find that they eventually stagnate. Um, there's a standard three conditions for evolution, heredity, uh, variation, and selection. And when we implement those in our simulations, it seems that they they don't result in uh, open-ended evolution. So my idea is to uh, look at the major transitions in evolution. The idea is that um, if we analyze these major transitions, we might be able to discover how life is able to uh, avoid stagnating. And the conclusion I've come to by looking at the major transitions is that we need a couple more conditions. Fission and fusion of individuals and some kind of uh, mechanisms that support cooperation among fused individuals. So there's various behavioral hallmarks for open-ended evolution. The one I've chosen is uh, major transitions in evolution. Why did I choose this one? It seems to me that the very idea that there is open-ended evolution comes from looking at life, from looking at biological life, from looking at culture. And so if we want to know what's necessary for open-ended evolution, that's where we should look, uh, major transitions. And I might be wrong about that, but it seems to me, even if I am wrong, we're going to discover something interesting by focusing on uh, major transitions. So the standard three conditions for evolution are variation, uh, variation in individuals, um, heredity, some traits are inherited, some, some traits are passed on to the next generation. Differential fitness, there's, uh, there's selection. So, uh, some organisms, because of whatever variations that they have, pass on uh, their traits to the next generation. So what I'm proposing is supplemental conditions is uh, Fission, sometimes an individual divides into two or more component parts. And fusion, sometimes two or more individuals combine to form a new individual. And cooperation. When there's fusion, there can be a conflict of interest between the fused parts. And so at some point, maybe not initially when the fusion happens, but eventually there has to be some kind of mechanism that enforces cooperation among the parts. So in the paper, I examined seven major transitions in biology, seven major transitions in culture, and one super transition, the evolution of human language that bridges biology and culture. Um, but I, I'm not going to go through all 15 right now. I'll just pick two out, one from uh, biology, the, evol the evolution of eusociality, and one from culture, the evolution of fossil fuel energy. So, eusociality. Uh, eusocial animals are characterized by three things, division of labor, overlapping generations in the colony, and cooperative care for the young. Examples of eusocial animals are ants, bees, wasps, termites, naked mole rats, snapping shrimp. Um, if you're familiar with Richard Dawkins' idea of uh, the selfish gene, at first eusociality might seem to be in conflict with uh, the selfish gene concept, but the solution to that apparent paradox is the notion of inclusive fitness. Um, one's child carries half of one's genes, but one's niece or nephew carries one quarter of one's genes. So two nieces or two nephews is approximately equivalent to one child in terms of your inclusive fitness. Um, and this explains why a worker be might uh, decide not to have any children of its own and instead uh, spend its time raising the children of its siblings. Or they're all genetically related because they all came from the same queen. So in this case, see, fusion is a fusion of the individual bees into a colony 
And the uh, cooperation mechanism that uh, enforces that fusion is the idea of inclusive fitness. And also uh, in, another mechanism that enforces the cooperation is evolved behaviors, uh, the way that the bees behave, deciding instinctually to raise uh, the children is, is uh, an evolved behavior that supports that fusion. Without that kind of support, the colony might fall apart. Um, now an example from culture, the, the Industrial Revolution, which was mostly powered by fossil fuel energy. So the Industrial Revolution began in Great Britain around 1800 AD, when coal became more important than agriculture. And the dominant industries at the time were textiles and iron making. Between 1770 and 1845, textiles contribution to the economy increased by a factor of five. Iron production went from 68,000 tons in 1788 to 1 1.6 million in 1845. There's three key technologies that were involved in the Industrial Revolution. The mechanization of spinning and weaving, the use of coal instead of wood for smelting iron, and the replacement of human muscle power with steam power. And these three technologies fused together um, So, for example, using coal to smelt iron meant that there was more iron, which was available for making uh, more complex machines with uh, metallic gears. Um, muscle power was replaced by steam power. Steam engines uh, use iron and also use coal. So these three things all fused together to make the Industrial Revolution possible. So, the three conditions are, I believe, um, necessary but not sufficient. The extra conditions we need are fission and fusion, um, and some mechanism to support cooperation. Um, and I, looking at the 15 transitions, it seems that those conditions are enough to give uh, all of the transitions, all 15 transitions. Um, now fission, none of the transitions require fission, but I think fission is, is uh, sort of a complementary to fusion, and also it plays a role in things like the human migration out of Africa. <coughs> so the next steps in this line of research, the, the main next step is to make a simulation that tests these ideas and demonstrates that there really is uh, an advantage to adding these, these new things, fission, fusion, cooperation, and that these new things may result in open-ended trans, trans, open evolution. Um, one possibility would be to pick one of the major transitions and simulate the situation before that transition and then run the uh, simulation and see if it's able to, by itself, reach the next stage that, to make that transition. So, uh, that's the end. Um, if you have any questions, I'll be right there by my poster and you can come and ask me the questions. Thank you.